calling all League of Legends fans, this video is for you. That's because AOC has just released a brand new 1440p gaming monitor, complete with hex tech design elements, RGB lighting and more, all based around the League of Legends theme. It may not be cheap at £400, but if you absolutely love League, could this be your dream monitor? Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and today we are checking out the AOC Aegon AG275QXL. This is no ordinary gaming monitor however, as it is built from the ground up to appeal to League of Legends fanatics. That stretches from the design to the monitor branding, the RGB lighting and more. At its core though, it is a fairly conventional 27 inch display with a Quad HD IPS panel and 170Hz refresh rate. In this video, we're going to find out if it's worth buying at the £400 asking price. There's only one place to start in this video then, and that is with the design. Before we go any further, however, I do need to make a confession. Until I got this monitor for review, never in my life had I actually played League of Legends, and I'm really sorry if that offends some people out there. I just want to say that because if you do see me playing a bit of League of Legends in this video and I look like a complete noob, it it's because I am. So disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the design. What we can see is basically the whole of the monitor is covered in gold accents and apparently this is called a hex tech design, whatever that means, but it's all over the back of the screen, it's on the chin on the monitor at the front and it even extends to the circular base. The base of the stand is also eye-catching due to its light effects RGB lighting and you can also find this on the rear of the panel as well. There's plenty of different RGB lighting effects to choose from but one of the key selling points for this monitor is that the lighting can actually sync up with in-game actions when you're playing League of Legends. In a nutshell, this boils down to the stand flashing certain colours when you kill various enemies or destroy turrets. Now, as someone who admittedly doesn't play League of Legends, I'm personally not convinced as to how useful this actually is, and during gaming I actually found the position of the RGB lighting directly underneath the display to be a bit distracting. That said, if you do play League, you could be watching this and thinking that RGB lighting effect looks really cool, so I won't knock it. On the topic of the stand as well, we do get a full complement of ergonomic adjustments. That includes up to 130mm of height adjust, and there's also tilt from 5 degrees downwards to 23 degrees upwards, and the screen can swivel all the way around due to the circular base of the stand. Lastly, we also get full 90 degree pivot in both directions, so you can use the screen vertically if you want, and VESA 100 mounting solutions are also supported. As for the connectivity options then, for the video inputs we get two HDMI 2.0 and then two DisplayPort 1.4. We can also see a four port USB hub with the yellow one denoting that it's a fast charge port and that needs one upstream USB cable. And then lastly we can also note a 3.5mm audio jack as well. Moving on to the OSD then, this is controlled via a small joystick on the lower right corner of the screen. AOC has even touched up the OSD UI, so it shares the same League of Legends theme, which personally I think is pretty cool. Controlling it with the joystick as well is dead easy, so I really have no complaints here. The one thing I would say is that when you turn the monitor on, it makes a really loud zinging sound and the League of Legends logo appears on screen. <laughs> But having now heard that sound, thankfully you can disable it in the OSD menu. We also get a small external control puck bundled with the AG27QXL and this just plugs into the back of the screen and can be used to control the OSD instead of using the joystick. I have seen this on a few other AOC monitors in the past and personally it doesn't appeal to me, it's always felt a little bit clunky and it's another cable to contend with. But if you want the option, it's there, and it is still kept in the same League of Legends theme, so 
we can't really complain too much, but for me, I'll stick to using the joystick. That is pretty much gonna do it for the design though, so it's now time to move on and talk about panel performance, starting off with our Spider-X testing. Things get off to a decent start here with a wide color gamut on show. We can see 100% of sRGB coverage, 90% Adobe RGB coverage, and then 93% of the DCI P3 space. As for brightness, AOC claims a peak of 400 nits, and we saw just shy of that, hitting almost 380 nits, which I'd say is perfectly fine for everyday use, and typically I kept it around 80% brightness. Contrast is also just shy of AOC's claimed 1000 to 1 ratio, as we saw 900 to 1 at max brightness, but it is an IPS panel, so for those looking for a top-notch contrast ratio, you would be better served by a VA screen. Out-of-the-box colour accuracy, however, is surprisingly good, with an average delta E of just 0.66 and a maximum of 1.98. I was also able to just about squeeze this down to a new average delta E of 0.59 after calibration, but credit to AOC as the out of the box results are very impressive indeed. It's time to talk gaming though, and we'll start off this section with a look at the monitor's response times. This is all done using the open source response time tool as developed by Andy over at Tech Team GB. The AG275QXL has four different overdrive modes, starting with overdrive off, then weak, medium, and strong, and we're gonna test all four at 170 hertz in this video. Starting with overdrive turned off then, the results here are honestly pretty decent and stand us in good stead for when we do start to enable overdrive. We can see an average gray to gray response time of 5.9 milliseconds, and there's obviously no overshoot present. Enabling the weak overdrive mode does improve greater gray response times as we'd expect, with a new average of 4.79 milliseconds, and there's just a couple of slower full times as shown in the bottom left corner. A couple of these transitions did also overshoot, but only by a single RGB value, so I don't think it's something you'd ever notice. As for the medium overdrive setting then, this improves the average transition time to 3.56 milliseconds, and that is very impressive. As you can see, however, there is overshoot present on almost every transition. It looks pretty bad on the chart, but to be honest, in the real world, it didn't bother me that much, and I say that as someone who is usually quite sensitive to overshoot. That being said, 17% of transitions having an error rate of over 15%, is clearly not ideal. Lastly, the strong overdrive mode definitely cranks things to the next level, but here I really did notice the overshoot, so I just can't recommend this mode at all. Overall then, I would say that most gamers are gonna to want to use either the weak or the medium overdrive modes. The medium overdrive mode did produce more overshoot, but some people may not mind or even notice. The weak overdrive mode is probably technically the superior of the two though, and the response times are still pretty fast. So let's see how it stacks up in the comparison chart. As we can see, of the six monitors we've tested with OSRTT, the AG275QXL is the fastest of the lot, with its average gray to gray time of 4.79 milliseconds when using the weak overdrive mode. This is obviously far from a comprehensive list, as I have plenty of more monitors to test, but it is a good indication that most people will find this screen to be up to speed. To be honest, that was certainly the case for me in my testing. It may be designed for League of Legends, but I found it more than fast enough for a few rounds of Call of Duty, while the punchy and vibrant colours also contribute to an impressive overall gaming experience. Gamers will also be glad to know that I had no issues when enabling G-Sync, despite the fact that this monitor isn't officially certified by NVIDIA. That said, it still worked absolutely fine with my RTX 3090 during my testing, helping to keep Forza Horizon 5 feel nice and smooth when I was sitting at 100 to 120 FPS. Likewise, input latency is no problem for the AG275QXL either. Testing with NVIDIA's LDAT tool, we saw end-to-end -to -end system latency hit 9.5 milliseconds, which is basically as expected for a 1440p panel at this refresh rate. Other screens around this refresh rate have come in marginally faster, but we're talking differences of 0.6 milliseconds or less 
so I really don't think you'd notice. Other things to mention include the viewing angles, but I've got no complaints here with no visible colour shift to my eye. There is a bit of backlight bleed on show, however, particularly in the bottom right corner, but it didn't bother me while gaming, and this will vary from unit to unit. The last thing I want to touch on then is going to be HDR, as the AG275 QXL does have Display HDR 400 certification. As regular viewers will know, however, I personally don't count this as real HDR. There's no dimming zones, and it just doesn't get bright enough or contrasty enough for a proper HDR experience. I personally would much rather to play in SDR mode and that is definitely my recommendation for this display. Overall then, AOC has produced a very solid monitor with the Aegon AG275QXL. From a technical perspective, it is just very hard to fault. Color accuracy is impressive for a gaming monitor, the response times are nice and fast, it gets decently bright and contrast is also about what we'd expect from an IPS panel. That aside, I think it is safe to say that the design is likely to split opinion. Obviously, if you don't play League of Legends, then I'm really not sure this will appeal at all, as if you don't play the game, I don't know why you'd want a League-branded monitor. It's not personally my cup of tea, but if you are a hardcore League of Legends player and you do want the RGB lighting synchronization and the Hextech design, then fair enough. My bigger concern about this monitor though is that the League of Legends branding definitely comes at a cost. Right now, the AG275 QXL is up for pre-order at £400 from Overclockers UK, when other 1440p 165Hz IPS displays that I've reviewed in the past, like the Iyama GB2770 QSU, are currently retailing for over £100 less. Even something more premium with RGB lighting, like the Gigabyte FI27Q, is currently £50 cheaper than this AOC monitor. Still, there's no denying that the AG275 QXL is a very impressive gaming monitor that just performs well. I do just think it is worth pointing out that if you're not absolutely sold by the League of Legends elements, you could save a bit of cash elsewhere. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review. So if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. You can also come chat with us over on our Discord server which is linked in the description. And while you're there, why not check out our merch store and you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic from KitGuru and I'll see you in the next video.